guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Hopefully this video finds you all doing well. In today's video, we're going to talk about the five key roles on any balanced team inside Raid Shadow Legends. Now, of course, you don't have to have and what a champion we pulled here to start the video out too, right? He will we'll be talking about uh, Mausoleum Mage later on in the video. Uh, but the, the thing here about these, these roles is two quick disclaimers. Number one is you don't have to have every single one of these roles on every single single one of your teams okay we're talking a an ideal balanced team here and caveat or disclaimer number two is that a lot of champions fill multiple roles you might have a debuffer who is also maybe a secondary nuker on your team so we're gonna be keep an eye out and keep a lookout for those champions in our collections that we can get extra value from and put in extra you know uh, importance or priority into maxing and ranking up those champions that way you can free up additional spots maybe a flex role on your team to take one of these spots okay so let's talk briefly about the five roles what they are and then give some examples on champions that fill those roles and how to build them out how to gear them uh in, a, in a, again in an ideal situation which really doesn't exist everything's dependent on where you are in the game what artifacts you have what champions you have so again take this with a grain of salt but i have seen a lot of people out there just with a real hodgepodge a mess to be honest of teams with no real balance in them so I hopefully this video can help a lot of you guys out in that regard so role number one is turn meter or CC crowd control champion uh, basically increasing the turn meter of your champions reducing the turn meter of the enemy champions or just having a strong crowd control ability such as a stun or a provoke uh, role number two on your team is going to be a, a straight up healer support champion so we're talking about healing cleansing and reviving those three abilities kind of uh encompass that secondary role the third role is going to be just a buffer so really solid buffs a block debuffs buff a increased defense buff just a counterattack buff right so really strong buffer champions role number four is going to be a debuffer champion uh decreased defense decreased attack champions and everything that goes along with it and i don't want your power packs come on man and and role number five you're ruining my video player am uh role number or role number five is going Going to be just your nuker your, your strong damage dealer on your team so let's go get ahead and again jump into these champions and talk about a few of each of those categories starting with turn meter so starting with turn meter let's go ahead and go to barbarians here and talk about high katoon she's a great example she has a speed aura a, a, a great uh additional value i should say out of your turn meter or cc champion your speed booster on your team and high katoon is a great champion to talk about you get her from a daily login reward and she has she's a great champion right rally the horde fills a turn meter of all allies by 15 percent place a 30 percent increase a speed buff on all allies for two turns on a three turn cooldown exactly what we're looking for and on her a3 she has a 50 75 percent chance when booked of decreasing the turn meter of your opponents of the enemies by 15 percent so she's boosting your team's speed via the turn meter via the increase via the increased speed buff and then she's reducing the speed and turn meter of your enemies and then another example would be uh, again trying to cover like some different areas and uh of, of turn meter or of uh of debuffers and the other one would be i think he's a knight revenant it would be executioner right so executioner is a great rare example of kind of a cc champion and again he can serve kind of multiple roles on your team he could also be kind of a secondary or third uh damage dealer in your team as well but on his a2 an aoe attack on a three turn cooldown attacks all enemies decrease the turn meter by 20 percent and then has a a 50 chance 75 when booked of placing a decreased speed debuff for two turns so again a good ex a more accessible option for turn meter i guess not a more accessible than high katoon she is a free daily login reward champion but you guys get the point executioner a nice early game option for a cc champion and then last but not least uh one to pick one of my favorite champions and again this is a champion that doesn't necessarily uh fit the mold of of what we've talked about in the previous two and that is basher right basher in a lot of ways is a nuker and also a debuffer and also he kind of self serves three roles in one champion and also a cc champion in kind of an unorthodox way with the stinging blast he attacks all enemies on a three turn cooldown he increases the cooldown of all the target skills by two turns 
I look at this as a crowd control ability because essentially you are handcuffing all the enemy all the enemy champions from being able to use anything but their A1, their basic standard ability, which is really great. It's a way to kind of neutralize the threat from the opposing team, especially in the arena. So again, I wanted to kind of give nods to some obvious champions and to maybe some, you know, outside the box niche champions in this video. So those would be examples of, of turn meter, uh, and there's a plenty of them in the game. Uh, there's a lot who cross over from turn meter to healer, like Apothecary, like Gargarab as well. Uh, so on your turn meter champions or on Basher, for example, you really want to prioritize accuracy. Every turn meter manipulation ability in this game is dictated on landing by your level of accuracy. So ha having high accuracy, I always try to shoot for at least 150 as you approach the end game, 200 uh, accuracy plus, get a lot of your accuracy from your banner. Uh, that's what you're looking for on these boosters. Also speed, right? Speed in general is gonna be a, a reoccurring theme here in this video, but speed is paramount to getting full value out of these champions because ideally you want to CC, you want to stun, you want to deplete turn meter before your opponent can do that. And the same thing goes for dungeons as well. Uh, so that would be the first kind of category. And then after that, you kind of want to look at these champions. Okay, Basher, is he going to be doing damage or is he going to be pure support? Uh, maybe a champion like uh, Apothecary would be more of a, a pure support champion. So I would boost him with some defense gear, with some HP gear. I would make him as fast as humanly possible. And with, uh, you know, on him, you don't need the high accuracy, but, you know, on high Katoon, uh, build it with accuracy as well, right? On a champion like Basher, even though he's still a CC, still the same role on my team, because his secondary role is actually a pretty solid nuker, I would want to build him with high crit rate, 100% crit rate, and a little bit extra damage. And you can see his base attack is already pretty high. So again, uh, once you build that accuracy, if you need it, and that speed, then look into what's their secondary use on your team going to be and build them accordingly. Uh, number two is going to be healers. So healers, I'm just going to start with like the most S tier uh, healer, your revival champion inside the entire game, and that is Raglan. She is a void legendary champion. I don't have her. Congratulations if you do, but she is the quintessential, again, uh, heal, reviver, cleanser in the game, so she deserves a mention. Miracle on a two-turn cooldown revives an ally with 75% HP in a full turn meter. Pretty dang good, right? Mercy removes all debuffs on all allies and heals them. The heal is proportional to, to this champion's attack and then has a turn meter on the A1. So that's the type of, you know, that is the a perfect uh, healer champion for your team, heal reviver on your team. Uh, Reliquary Tender is another one. She is a rare, albeit a rare void champion, but she is kind of a very, very, very miniature version of, uh, of Raglan. So she has a revive. Uh, revives an ally with 30% HP and fills her turn meter by 30% on a five turn cooldown. Man, the difference between Reliquary Tender and, uh, and Raglan is pretty dramatic, but you guys can see the same uh, revival ability on her A3. Uh, not the same, but same, but much, much uh, watered down, right? Uh, removes all debuffs from all allies and then places a continuous heal on them for two turns on her A2. So again, a cleanser here plus the heal. And on the A1, attacks one enemy has a decreased attack chance as well. I'll, I'll, I'll final example for you guys as a healer cleanser support champion would be steel skull we talk a lot about steel skull and steel skull actually serves two roles which we'll talk about in the next category but removes all debuffs from a target ally then heals them by 40 percent so on your your cleansers your revivers on your team of course speed again important uh to have uh accuracy usually not important steel skull being an example where it actually is important because he has a poison on his a1 but generally speaking here we don't need to prioritize accuracy on most of our healers, just having a lot of speed and durability. So deep on almost all of your, your revivers, your healers, you're going to build them to be the last to die. That way they can revive all of your, your other allies, right? So having a strong defense, usually on the gauntlets or HP on the gauntlets, having strong defense or HP on your chest, and of course having defense and HP on your ring and usually even your amulet is going to be important on these champions, okay? Okay. Uh, so the next category again is buffers. So buffers again, we talked about this. There's a lot of crossover. Steel Skull, for example, has the increased defense for two turns and a heal on his A3. 
So on the buffers, we're looking for strong champions who make a, a large impact on your team by giving really OP buffs. We just pulled one in Mausoleum Mage at the beginning of this video, so let's start with him. He's a great example, and again, there's some crossover in a lot of these healer, reviver, cleansers with the strong buffers, right? Support champions in general probably could be combined into one huge category, but I did want to differentiate because cleansing, healing, and reviving are really, again, quintessential kind of support abilities. And then buffing, there's a lot of champions who buff but don't do any of those things. So, uh, Mausoleum Mage, block debuffs buff, a great buff to have. Increase crit rate, mm, whatever kind of a buff to have. And then increase defense on all allies for two turns on a three turn cooldown. That's exactly what you're looking for. And uh, again, removes all debuffs from all allies, then heals them. So a little bit of a cleanse too on his A3. But it's a great example of like a really, really strong uh, buffer on your team. And then, you know, we talked about counterattack being another really powerful buff in the game. Of course, the only epic counterattack champion on all allies is Skullcrusher. So he has ally protect and counterattack, two, uh, two more great kind of support buffs for your team. Having a tanky champion place that 50% ally protect, eating up, soaking up a bunch of the damage off of your more squishy champions is really powerful. And of course, the counterattack ability, I mean, there's nothing to say about it. It's just an amazing ability to have. It really changes the dynamics of your entire team. So Skullcrusher, another example. And then as a rare example, we can go to the Barbarians. Definitely want to give a big shout out to Marked. Marked is a rare Barbarian champion who has a strong version of uh, obviously block debuffs and increased defense, again, on a three turn cooldown when booked on Totemic Power. So these are the type of champions we're looking for for our major buffers on the team. And again, for buffing champions, speed's going to be very important, durability, and on some of these champions having a high resist if you play them in the arena, like Mausoleum Mage, that way they will not be frozen or, you know, put to sleep or whatever, stunned. That way they can cleanse or uh, same thing goes for, you know, cleansers and healers, but they can cleanse and still be alive to place that block debuffs or place that increased defense or block damage or whatever buff you have on the rest of your allies, okay? So sometimes resist, mainly defense. Again, speed and HP are going to be priorities. Some of these champions too, you can use as kind of second or third damage dealers on your team all depends on the champion uh next up is going to be the debuffers and that's where things get a little bit different here debuffers again we have war maiden here everybody knows about war maiden we're looking for decreased defense on an aoe with a three turn cooldown that is the holy grail of a debuffer on your team and debuffers usually make good kind of secondary or third nukers on your team as well that is the case with war maiden one of the better multipliers for rare champions in this game so you, but the thing with with every debuffer whether it's war maiden whether it's uh stag knight who's my personal favorite debuffer in the game has the strong version of decreased defense and decreased attack on a three turn cooldown on his a2 very simple kit but very very effective in the game uh so you know no matter who your debuffer is having them go first is going to be very very paramount if not first after your turn meter booster, right? Having them be go before your nuker is essential to have success out of your debuffer. If your nuker is going before your debuffer, then what's the point of even having them on the team, right? Because you're not gonna have that defense down. You're not gonna be able to do all that extra damage uh, that a 60% uh, minus defense or a weakened debuff, 25% weakened will do to the enemies. So again, having your debuffer go before your AoE nuker is going to be essential. Another debuffer to, to cover here is, actually, let's cover it. Let's give a nod. You, you know the Tyrells of the world. You know the Venus and the Draco Morphs and the, you know, the, the OP legendary champions. But let's give a nod to Rear Guard Sergeant. Again, two rolls, one champion. She is a debuffer. She has a decrease uh, a, a defense on her A1, decrease attack on her A2, but she also has some support abilities and the ally protecting continuous heal on all allies except this champion for two turns on a three turn cooldown. So again, we're looking at, you know, dual uh, on almost all of our debuffers, we're looking for kind of dual usage, filling two roles. Either they're going to be a nuker like War Maiden or a support like Rear Guard Sergeant. So getting that extra value out of your debuffer, Stag Knight, War Maiden, I would recommend you try to build them with 100% crit rate and have them help out a little bit. Now with support, with buffers, and even with some debuffers such as Rear Guard Sergeant, having these champions with high HP, again like a nod to Mausoleum Mage, 
or pain keeper for example having them with high hp and putting them in a shield artifact set will change your teams change your ability inside this game will help you clear dungeons you previously could not clear so consider farming shield gear and putting them in a shield set you will not regret it it's going to have a dramatic effect on your high hp support champions or in this case as a rear guard sergeant uh your debuffer let's go ahead and move on to the last category you guys know it's the damage dealers right so either the aoe nukers or the hard hitting single target damage dealers in the game uh basically this one is pretty straightforward people who are going to be dealing a lot of damage for you right there's a lot of them in this game you guys know all about skull crown she has the unkillable she has two aoe attacks we're basically looking for champions that have again for the aoe champions we talked about biggin having the, the best multipliers inside the entire game and three strong aoe attacks man this guy is a monster very high base attack as well now on some of your nukers for dungeons especially if you're in the mid game you're gonna have to be putting these champions still in a defense or hp chest because what use is in a an aoe nuker if they're dead before you get to the boss so keep that in mind it's not always the right decision to go attack percentage on the chest but when you can get away with it if you say okay my nuker's no longer looking like he's going to die anymore or she's going to die anymore then you should make that switch as you progress in the game from a defense or hp chest to an attack chest see if you can get away with it see if you can keep your nuker alive in that situation other examples of uh of nukers i mean there's so many again in the game here uh but you can even build bellower to be a nuker in this game looking for aoe attacks and of course there's tons just tons of single target damage dealers in the game as well like faceless where is he here he is he's a great single target damage dealer a lot of these champions have it ignore shield or block damage uh, a lot of them are defense based we look at a champion like Coltar obviously you guys know her as well uh, champions that deal damage based on enemy max HP like Armager, Coltar, uh, Royal Guard, Husk, Champions Septimus champions like that are incredibly valuable because they can do a ton of damage now in terms of building these champions you really want to prioritize again we talked about attack or defense chest based on where you are in the game getting their crit rate to 100% is going to be important building them with accuracy such as a coltar if you need it you do need it on coltar to decrease the turn meter to by 100 percent on her a3 and last but not least and certainly most important is crit damage crit damage is really what you want to be looking for on your single target and your aoe damage dealers and of course on your aoe damage dealers consider savage gear ignoring enemy defense consider helm smasher or flawless execution uh, and masteries to ignore more defense defense or cool gear if you have it to ignore more defense ignore defense and crit damage is generally speaking going to be more effective than just building out an incredibly high uh base attack on these champions so guys those are the key roles to a raid shadow legends team again there are no hard and fast concrete rules golden rules if you will inside this game this is just some advice to help you guys maybe better structure or think about some champions that you haven't thought about in terms of optimizing your teams in the game if you enjoy the content here i invite you to subscribe to the channel thank you for watching all the way till the end and as always take care guys